Another lost civilization that is even more mysterious than the Atlantis civilization is in that of the Puntis. Why? Because it is documented to have been a rich land who traded with Egypt and Mesopotamia, but as of yet, we don't actually know where they came from. South America, perhaps? Who knows? The land of Punt is described in ancient Egyptian texts as the land of the gods and a region rich in resources. Though it is unknown exactly who they were or what even happened to them, in the decades after Jean-Francisco Champollion first deciphered Egyptian hieroglyphics in 1822, Common Era, and Western scholars began reading Egyptian text, questions arose as to where Punt was located and what it is called in the modern world. Punt is almost certainly modern-day Puntland state of Somalia based on the evidence of the ancient Egyptian inscriptions. According to historian Amid Abadi, the ancient city of Opin in Somalia is identical to the city of Poyen, referenced as part of Punt by ancient inscriptions. Wait, do you hear this? The country is best known for Queen Hatshepsut's famous expedition in 1493 BC in the 18th dynasty of Egypt. This exchange between Egypt and Punt brought back living trees to Egypt, marking the first known successful attempt at transplanting foreign fauna. This voyage to Punt is only the most famous, however, and evidence suggests that the Egyptians were trading with the land of Punt as early as the region of the Pharaoh Khufu in the 4th dynasty and probably earlier. It would appear that a special relationship existed between the two societies. The incense trees mentioned were an especially impressive article of trade. This exchange is the first time in recorded history that plants and trees were successfully transplanted in another country. This transplant was so successful the trees flourished in Egypt for centuries. The roots of the frankincense trees brought back from Punt by Hatshepsut's expedition can still be seen outside of her complex in Deir al-Bahari. Inscriptions on the walls of the site detail the Egyptian relationship with Punt and make clear that it was a mutually beneficial one and both parties held the other in deep respect. Reliefs on the walls of the temple show the chief of the Puntis and his wife receiving the envoys from Egypt with all honors. So precise are these depictions that modern day scholars have been able to diagnose the Punti wife of the chief Ati's medical problems. The inscriptions mention King Peruhu of Punt and his generosity which, judging from the goods brought back to Egypt, was vast. Hatshepsut's reign was among the most prosperous in Egypt's history, but it is clear that she considered her expedition to Punt among her greatest successes. The Punt civilization is a largely an unknown and mysterious civilization that existed between 8 and 3,000 years ago. Many readings will describe it as an early civilization that existed long before the development of a culture that found it necessary to record its history. Gold from Punt is recorded in Egyptian history as early as the 4th century. They also traded with ancient Greece, providing ebony, myrrh, silk, gold, scented perfumes, and other precious minerals. Scholars have argued that modern-day Somalia Puntland founders are inspired by the ancient kingdom, but more recent findings of small pyramidal structures, stone ruins, caves, and buildings in northeast Somaliland give proof to the fact that the thriving civilization indeed existed in Somalia. Egyptian history indicates monuments, copper, and carved amulets were made of the gifts that were brought into Egypt from Punt. However, the only findings include a painting depicting the queen of Punt at the time of the pharaoh Hatshepsut's visit and a tree made of metal that still stands in front of Hatshepsut's temple. The only other depictions of the Punt civilization are paintings from historical readings and a few other carvings in Egypt. Punt was immortalized in Egyptian literature in the very popular tale of the shipwrecked sailor, in which a castaway Egyptian sailor on an island converses with a great serpent who calls himself the Lord of Punt and sends the sailor back to Egypt laden with gold, spices, and precious animals. The sailor in this story tells his master the tale to cheer up after a failed expedition. He points out how his master may feel disappointed at his recent failure, but how he once experienced a similar failure himself, only worse. His ship was actually lost and he feared for his life. 
The land of Punt is purposefully chosen in this story as the mystical on which the sailor washes up because it had already been linked to the gods in the past. The sailor is telling his master that even though life may look bleak at a certain time, good can come out of even the darkest moments in life. He holds up the example of the Lord of Punt sending him home a richer man than when he had set out on his doomed voyage as the name of Punt would have reminded the master of the gods and their blessings and would have reminded an audience hearing the tale as well. The land of Punt eventually became a semi-mythical land to the Egyptians, but was still understood as a very real place through the New Kingdom. The visor Rekmira mentions accepting tribute from foreign delegations from Punt during the reign of Amonhetu II. Punt is mentioned during the reign of Ramses the Great and that of Ramses III. Punt came to hold a deep fascination for the Egyptian people as a land of plenty and was known as Tet Netjer, the land of the gods, from which all good things came to Egypt. Punt was also associated with Egyptian ancestry in that it came to be seen as their ancient homeland and further, the land where the gods emerged from and consorted with each other. Exactly why Punt was elevated from reality into mythology is not known, but after the reign of Ramses III, the land receded further and further in the minds of the Egyptians until it was lost to legend and folklore. Today, the people of Somalia honor their ancient relationship with Egypt by keeping alive the language and customs. Historian Abdeslam Mohammed cites English linguistic Charlie Barber in describing how the language of ancient Egyptian belonged to the Hamatek group of languages, which are still spoken across a large part of North Africa and include Somalia. Mohammed comments on this citing how people in modern day Somalia continue to name their children after the ancient Egyptian gods, one example being the modern Arakthi from the ancient Egyptian Harakti, although the land of Punt slowly vanished into mythology in ancient Egypt, its rich heritage continues on and is preserved in the present day by those who remember and honor their past. What do you guys make of this lost civilization? Very rich and well respected, but who were they? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.